Beth, I hear that you are a football player. Yep. And I hear that you've played quite a few different positions. Which is your favorite? I really like uh, wide receiver. Cool. Does that make you a Colts fan? <laughs> You're not a Colts fan? <laughs> but, you know, I did hear that their quarterback the other day couldn't get into his house. Apparently somebody painted an end zone in his front yard. <laughs> <laughs> Ba-boom! I need some dap on that, Easy. I need some, Hannah. Thank you. I'm just trying to get you ready. Getting you in your game. Are you ready to recite a passage? Yes. All right, here we go. Seth, please recite Psalm 19, 7 through 14. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise and simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 19, 7 through 14. That was really well delivered, Seth. What's the significance of that passage, Seth? It, uh, the passage tells us that um, God rules over all areas of our life and that um, whatever we need, uh, He is there and that right. uh, He can keep us from sin. Amen. And I love the beginning of that passage. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You know, the New Testament tells us that the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. In other words, God has given us a law to show us that we're sinful. We look at it and it reflects that truth back to us. And our problem is people, the reason why people don't recognize their need for God's forgiveness is because they think they're good enough to get into heaven because they compare themselves to other people. I mean, you come up to the guy who's smoking marijuana, you say, hey, what are you doing? He says, look, I know I shouldn't be doing that, but I'm a good person, right? At least I'm not uh, uh, hurting anybody. That guy over there uh, is, uh, you know, a, a thief, right? You come up to the guy who's a thief. He says, man, at least I'm not uh, taking anyone's life. He's a murderer. You go up to the murderer very carefully. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Murderer. How are you today? But even the murderer, right, will look around and say, hey, I'm a good person. At least I'm not like Hitler who murdered millions of people. But when we look into God's law, that if we've told one lie by his standard, we're a liar. If we've taken one thing, we're a thief. Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. You recognize your guilt. You can't get to heaven on your own. Christ died, rose again. We repent, place our faith in him. God gives us everlasting life. Well, and it's so encouraging for you as a young person, you've spent all this time memorizing God's word. And it, this whole passage is talking about how, you know, the word of God is what equips us and it gives us, it's a sort of the spirit, right? And it, it's, this, it's what we use to fight against sin. And you have that in your heart and we're here to honor and celebrate that today. Amen. Seth, you did a great job reciting that passage and you received a thousand points. Congratulations. Oh. Good job, man.